Today, I'm going to show you how to make Korean beef bone broth called sagol yuksu. And I'm also going to show you how to make seollongtang using sagol yuksu. And for my bone broth dieters, you came to the right place today because Korean beef bone broth is mild and yet creamy and so delicious. And guess what? You control what goes in the bone broth as opposed to spending hundreds of dollars buying bone broth from manufacturers that I don't know what they're really putting in there. Now don't be intimidated about making this beef bone broth. All you need is time to slowly brew the beef bones. 오늘의 레시피 깔끔하고 고소한 사골 육수 만들기 그리고 맛있는 설렁탕 만들기 오늘도 여러분들과 영어로 함께 하겠습니다. Ah, slurping straight from the bowl. Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper의 Helen입니다. Okay, so to make our beef bone broth, 사골 육수, we need beef bones. If you go to the Korean supermarket in the freezer section, you'll see beef bones called 소사골. Now you could also ask your local butcher to get you some beef bones. So here I have about five pounds of beef bones. Now these usually come frozen, so make sure to thaw it out. You see that? That's the bone marrow. That's what we want, so keep that in mind. Now my pot is eight quart size, so you could use any pot size that you want. The only thing to remember is fill your pot, no matter the size, about halfway with your beef bones. I want you to fill the pot with cold water so that you have an inch of space to the rim of the pot. I know some of you are asking, do we need to pre-rinse the bones before we add them to the pot? Absolutely not, because our first boil right now will be our cleansing boil. So if you only want to make the beef bone broth, you could skip this part. But if you want to make the salongtang, which is the soup that we make using the beef bone broth, you need to get some beef shank. I have about a pound here to make the thin beef slices that is a must topping for our salongtang. Now make sure to soak our beef shank in cold water for about 30 minutes beforehand. This is to remove any excess blood. So to our pot, we're gonna add our beef shank like so. Now set your stove heat to high and wait for the broth to start boiling. So once the water starts boiling like this, we're gonna put our lid on. We're gonna reduce our heat to low and come back in 10 minutes. All right, so it's been 10 minutes and let's have a look. Ooh. All right, so we're gonna turn the heat off and quickly bring the pot over to the sink. And we're gonna quickly pour this entire pot into a strainer. Turn the cold water on and just rinse it quickly like this for like 10 seconds, just so that you could pick it up with your hands. So I would just want you to quickly rinse each piece of bone like this. You see how clean? This is all the good cartilage and our bone is so clean and it's now ready to be slowly cooked so that we could extract that really yummy, milky flavors from our bone. Before you start adding back the clean bone pieces back in the pot, I want you to clean your pot and your lid of the skunk so that your pot and lid is super clean. Okay, so after you rinse the bones with cold water, I want you to take pieces that have like excess fat. This is excess fat. These we're just gonna trim off with your kitchen shears. You don't have to take everything off completely, but any excess fat that you see, trim them off like so. Sometimes you'll also find pieces that have like weird, funky things on it. Those need to go too, and that's it. I just wanna make sure you don't confuse, that's the bone marrow. Do not cut this off thinking that it's fat. You see how it's in the center cavity of the bone? That's the bone marrow, that we wanna keep. Do not cut the bone marrow off. All right, so we're gonna place our flash blanched bones in here. And now for our beef shank, it literally shrunk in half. 
And here is our beef shank that's gonna go on top. And we're gonna fill this with cold water, just like how we did earlier. About one inch of space to the rim. I mean, unless you like cleaning your stove, set your heat to high. And we're gonna wait for the water to start boiling. So once you start seeing the bubbles form, it's about to start boiling. We're gonna add the lid and lower our stove heat to medium. And we're gonna cook this for about 45 minutes. All right, so it's been 45 minutes on medium heat. Ooh, look at that. So it's starting to turn milky already, and that is excellent day. Now we're gonna pick up our beef shank. This is done. And we're gonna place it in our Tupperware. Let's leave it upside down. And we're just gonna let this cool down and come back to it in a little bit. Our water has evaporated and also to create the space that the beef shank took, I'm gonna pour two more cups of water. The heat remains at medium and we're gonna place the lid. Okay, now we're gonna lower our heat to like medium low, just a little bit. And we're gonna let this baby slowly, slowly simmer for four hours. So once this is done cooling down, cover it with the lid and keep this in the refrigerator until we are done with making our beef bone broth. And four hours later, let's have a look. Ooh la la. So your liquid should have reduced to about two thirds. And quickly, we're gonna pour this into a bowl. And I have a strainer there just in case we get some things that we need to take out. Okay, so you don't have to take out all the broth, but take out as much as you can. We filter out some of the oil, but we're gonna take out the oil later on. And this, we're gonna put aside and make sure it cools down. And then we're gonna fill with water, cold water again, almost to about an inch from the rim. And then we're gonna stop. Just scoop up whatever floats to the top like this. And the first brew is always the thickest. Look how milky that looks. And this yellow fat that's floating on top, we're gonna take care of removing that all together later on. So I wanna give everyone a quick warning. So during the cleansing brew and during our first brew, you're gonna have some funky smell from the bones. And that is perfectly normal. Just air out your windows. But by the time we get to the second and third brew, the smell will subside. So if you have people that complain in your household, then they don't get to eat this delicious beef bone broth, right? So you ask, what else can you use the beef bone broth for? Well, you could use it to up your Korean soup and stew game to a new level. You could use it to make kimchi jjigae. And here is my kimchi jjigae with a full slab of pork belly together. Oh boy, this is my extra, extra special kimchi jjigae that you do not want to miss out. And you could also use it to make tteokguk or tteokmandukguk. Yes, this is our New Year's Day special soup. And tenjang jjigae. That is your soybean paste stew. Oh, with bone broth added together it is amazing this is my next week's recipe so hit that notification bell and subscribe and then put it back on the stove and then we're going to turn the heat to high and wait for the broth to start boiling so once you see the water starting to boil i want you to lower your heat to medium low put the lid on it and we're going to come back in four hours, but you could continue to brew this for six hours at medium low heat. So once the brew has come to room temperature, put a plastic wrap on it, seal it tight, store it in the refrigerator while we cook the second and third brew. Okay, so here is the first brew that's been sitting in the fridge. The broth will be like gelatinous, and we're just gonna scrape the fat on top like that. So you see, that's our broth, the white part, and it's like jelly-like, and that is perfectly the way it's supposed to be. A little bit of fat left on top is okay, but we got most of it out here. Once the bone broth has been in the refrigerator for 10 hours or so, it should be jello-like like this. It should jiggle wiggle, 
This has been in the refrigerator overnight, but if you only had this in the refrigerator for like four hours or so, it might not have formed this jiggle yet. So don't be alarmed if you don't see the jiggle wiggle. <laughs> All right, let's check our second brew. This has been brewing for four hours on low, medium heat. <gasps> look at that. It's almost reduced to half and look how milky that looks. So you could let this run up to six hours on medium low heat. And let me show you. So this is our third and final brew. Instead of adding water to our third brew, we're gonna add this first brew that we refrigerated into the pot. Scrape all this in, don't waste any of it. This is to create a more concentrated and more creamy broth texture and taste to our bone broth. Take your mesh strainer, anything that's floating to the top, take out like so. Look how thick our bone broth looks. I prefer to do a skimming of the fat after this cools down because you also end up pulling out some of the broth. So I feel like I'm wasting the broth. Anyway, you could do whatever works for you. Set the heat to high and wait for it to start boiling a little bit and then we're going to reduce it down to medium low so our bone broth is starting to boil so then we're going to place the lid and lower our heat again to medium low and we're going to come back to it in two hours Okay, so that is our third brew taking place right now. Some people will go to like fourth, fifth, sixth brews. I personally don't because my mom and my aunts, they all tell me that by the time you get to the third brew, you've already extracted all the yummy flavors from the beef bones as well as most of the nutrition. So I always stop at the third brew, but if you want to go on more, it's up to you. All right, so it's been two hours and let's take a look. Look how thick the color looks. This is exactly what we want. Now we're gonna turn the heat off. This is the cartlet. You could discard this or eat it, but this is what everyone's paying that uh, money for to get collagen powder. This is it, this is the original. So you can enjoy eating this with the broth, but if you don't feel like it, take it out. I'm gonna take out everything from the pot and put it in our bowl. Lots of collagen. So make sure to take out everything that's floating on top and anything else that's in the pot, we wanna take everything out. So you see this liquid in the bottom? Uh-oh, we're not wasting that. We're gonna put it back in the pot. So lift up your bowl and just carefully pour it back into the pot. We worked so hard for this broth, I don't wanna waste any of it. There you go. Now the only thing to do is let this come to room temperature in your kitchen. And we're gonna remove this yellow fat on top by putting it in the fridge overnight. After the bones sit in the bowl for about an hour, it'll, it will release more broth, as you can see here. So we definitely don't wanna waste that. So what I would do is take a plate and then pick it up, hold the plate down, and then pour all that excess broth that the bones released in the bowl back into our pot like so. So once the broth comes to room temperature, put the lid on and then put it in your fridge and let it rest for 10 to 12 hours. Here we go. This is our very, very last step. All we need to do is skim the fat off our cold beef bone broth. So let's take a look. Ooh la la. See, this is how it's supposed to look. A true test is you tap it like that. If it jiggles, that means it's your true authentic beef bone broth. If it's runny even after sitting in the fridge for 12 hours, I don't know what that is. Anyway, so we're gonna take a metal strainer and scrape off the yellow fat that you see right here, like so, because we do not want to put that in our body. So that it looks like this. No more yellow beef fat in our beef bone broth. And ta-da, here is the beef shank that we cooked earlier. For salongtang, having a few slices of beef with the beef bone broth is a must. 
and we're just gonna slice the beef into thin slices. It might look pink, but it's thoroughly cooked, okay? So continue cutting and place the cut beef slices into our glass Tupperware. And store this in the fridge until you're ready to eat them. Now for my beef bone broth dieters, I highly recommend adding a few slices of beef with your beef bone broth so that it keeps you feeling less hungry and less hangry, hangry. as well. <laughs> now in a little bit, I'm gonna show you how to pack your beef bone broth individually so that it's convenient for you. And the second topping that's always included in our salong tang is homyeon, are these tiny, tiny noodles. So good. So one serving size of somyeon for a seolongtang topping is small, really less than the diameter of a dime. And no, this is not a noodle soup, so don't go overboard with the noodles. To make our somyeon in a medium-sized pot, fill it about halfway, it bring the water to boil. And we're gonna add our somyeon to our pot. I'm cooking about four serving size toppings for our salongtang. And with the heat remaining high, you have to stand over it. Stir your noodles, keep an eye on it. All right, so it's been three minutes and I just wanna show you. Your noodles should look like that. You don't wanna overcook the noodles either. And this is ready. We're gonna turn the heat off and we're gonna quickly pour our noodles into a strainer. Turn the cold water on and cool down the temperature of our noodles. And this is basically done. Now make sure to toss the noodles to shake off the excess water. Okay, so this is for my beef bone broth dieters. I would take our gelatinous broth, fill it up to about this amount. You could also break it up. And what I would do is take maybe one or two slices, that's totally up to you, of our beef, like so, kind of squish it down. And then take your plastic wrap, press it down a little bit. I always like to kind of protect my food when I put it in the fridge and especially in the freezer. So it's like an added layer of blanket to keep my food from smelling like the freezer and also to keep the moisture within. And then put your lid on it and then put them in the freezer and take one out when you're ready to eat them. Thaw it out first and heat it up in the microwave. Here is my tukbegi bowl. This is earthenware clay bowl, but this is heat safe and you can put it right on your stove top. Any Korean supermarket will have these. If not, you could order it online and I'll have the product link in the description box below. And when you're ready to eat, heat up your bone broth. Ooh la la. Look at how milky and creamy and silky our beef bone broth looks. I know some of you are asking, so how does bone broth taste like? Well, let's find out. Mm. It has a very, very clean taste. It's very mild, but it has this like creamy taste that's lingering in the back of your mouth. It's so good. Oh, that's really good. I feel like it's good for my soul right now. When it comes to sagol yuksu or salongtang, we never, ever season it in the pot. What we do is we season it when we cook with it or when we have it at table side. And I'll show you in a little bit how you season your sagol broth and your salongtang. So in here, I have our somyeon noodles and two slices of our beef that we cooked earlier. And to this, we're gonna add our beef bone broth that we just heated up. So you don't really need to heat up the beef and the noodles again, because the broth is so hot that it will just reheat it in the broth itself. I'm doing a very large portion that they normally give at the Salongtang restaurant, but you could certainly go smaller at home. Bon appetito! I mean, I literally could give myself beef collagen facial. <laughs> oh, it smells so good. So you always start with the broth before you add anything. Mm. And then once you taste it, here is our coarse ground salt. This one was ground up a little bit and that's 
scallions, but you could also use teppa, which is your big Welch onion. It looks like leeks, but it's not. So I always like to add a spoonful of our scallions on top like so. And then I would take some salt, just take a little bit and put it in there and then mix it all up and taste it again. So salt to season to your preference. I like to add freshly cracked black pepper, about this much. Thoroughly mix everything up so that the salt is completely dissolved. Now pick up a spoonful of your broth and have a taste. Now the next thing to do is add your rice in here. In Korean, we have tons of kukbap, which is basically rice soup where we add and actually dunk a bowl of rice into our soup. And seollongtang is one of the most famous kukbaps in Korea. This is how you have it, folks. You go in with a spoonful and you grab some rice, the noodles, and the broth, and then you go <laughs> Oh, and you just slurp it, and you gulp it. You go in for her second bite. Now with the beef and the noodles and a little bit of the rice. Oh, does that look good or does that look good? Now there's a spicy condiment called tadegi, which they serve at Seolongtang restaurants. If you want to learn how to make this, make sure to check out the description box below for the video link. And the next thing that I always do is I take a piece of kaktugi and I go in here and then I wash it and it becomes slightly spicy. And then look at that, look at that kaktugi. It's so good together. And for my bone broth dieters, kaktugi will scratch that itch when you're craving for something crunchy, savory, garlicky, and salty. And guess what? It's a vegetable and there's practically no calories involved when you're eating kaktugi. But just be warned, you're gonna eat a ton of it because it's so good. So I have a recipe for kaktugi and the video link is in the description box below so you can check it out and make it at home for yourself. Here is a perfect bite for you. That's how you end eating uh, seolongtang. You have to finish it by ah, slurping straight from the bowl. I wanna thank everyone for watching today and for my Bone Broth Dieters, I wish you guys all the success in your diet endeavors and always stay healthy. Now, if you enjoyed watching today's video, I wanna kindly, kindly ask you to click on that thumbs up icon because that does wonders for my channel. And I will see you in one of the videos you see right here.